In this video, I will move on uh, talking about mapping between Z and S plus or S and Z plus. Okay. Now uh, we want to uh, try to uh, figure out how we can map a constant damping loci or a constant damping line from S plane to the Z plane. Let's first talk about constant damping uh, location. Okay. So in S plane, we can write our pole location as like this: sigma plus j omega. Uh, when damping is constant, we can introduce the uh, coefficient zeta omega n plus omega n 1 minus zeta square okay so we know that the zeta is constant uh, it's better to uh, write it in this form which is equal to minus alpha omega d plus j omega d okay so technically this is omega d this is alpha times omega d as you can see Omega d is uh, constant and uh, zeta omega d is changing. Okay, so uh, depending on the value of the alpha, our line will look like this. Okay, where this is omega d, this is equal to minus alpha omega d, and omega d is the, is the damp nature frequency. Okay, by changing the omega d, we technically move on the same line where damping is constant and we know that it's important for uh, continuous time control systems because damping is correlated with overshoot and some other uh, performance uh, related metrics okay good. so how we can map it so we will do the same thing we'll just write the mapping and try to figure out the overall shape okay so z is equal to e to the power t s and it is equal to e to the power minus alpha omega d times t e to the power j omega d t. Okay, this is the magnitude and this defines the phase. So let's look at the magnitude. Z is equal to e to the power, okay, so minus, okay, so minus alpha omega d T, okay, so instead of uh, T, which is the tempting, uh, sampling time, we can convert it into sampling frequency. It is equal to minus 2 pi alpha omega D divided by omega S. So technically, a ratio between the damping frequency and the sampling frequency uh, gives an important metric in terms of the uh, location of the pole in the Z plane. Okay, that's good. Uh, and let's look at the phase. Z is equal to simply omega dt. Okay, omega dt, we can convert into uh, something frequency of phase, 2 pi omega d divided by omega s. Okay, that's good. So let's change it here. That's good. So, okay, let's write it again. Z is equal to e to the power minus 2 pi alpha omega d divided by omega s and phase is equal to 2 pi omega d divided by omega s. Okay, sometimes instead of using the sampling time, sampling frequency gives a better uh, mathematical framework. Okay, good. So what's happening? Uh, let's look at the magnitude. Okay, when omega d and omega d is changing alpha as constant is equal to zero, we start from one. Okay, it's important. We exactly start from one. Okay, it's obvious because we start from zero and we know that zero is mapped to z is equal to one, omega d is equal to zero in this case. And what's happening is that omega is increasing because of this minus sign, magnitude is decreasing. Okay, that's good. So magnitude is decreasing. Uh, what about phase? As you can see, uh, when omega d is equal to zero, phase is equal to zero. Uh, what's happening with the phases? Phase is linearly changing when omega d is changing. So, okay, so if the magnitude was constant, we will do this kind of change with the phase, just infinite amount of them. But magnitude is also decreasing, so which would end up being having a spiral like structure. It's technically a spiral. And a logarithmic looking spiral and it will go like this. Okay, so if we label important points, so first of all, a uh, unit circle is this, okay? So, okay, it uh, intersect unit circle at only is equal to one, 
Okay, so at this point, this is equal to omega d is equal to omega s divided by 4. Okay, so at this point, omega d is equal to omega s divided by 2. And here, omega d is equal to omega s times 3 divided by 4. And let's do the final. This is omega d is equal to omega s. Okay, as you can see, a fairly simple line is a quite complex in the z plane, which is a possible when you're going from continuous to discrete. Okay, so let's solve an example to better understand the uh, concept. Okay, this is the result as you can see. Uh, and here, as you can see, I labeled also the uh, magnitude of this uh, point on the uh, y axis or imaginary axis. Okay, good. So, so we have a structure like this, okay? So from S plane to Z plane, and similar to the previous example, we want to map this region to the Z plane using the same concept. So what are we going to do is, let's start with this, okay? So there is a structure here, okay? So this is going to infinity. So we have a cap on the uh, imaginary part of the path. Okay, which is easier to do that. Okay, so this is omega s2. And as you remember, having a cap on the uh, imaginary axis, technically uh, having a like phase or angular limit. And omega s2 is the half of the sampling frequency, which means that our phase is less than 180 degrees and higher than minus 180 degrees, which technically covers the whole region. The only thing is it will not circulate, it will have a unique mapping. Okay, this is the basic idea, which is easy, okay? Now let's go to the uh, this line, okay? So what is this? It is 4 to 5 degrees, okay? Which means that alpha is equal to 1. So what are we going to do is we will go to the previous case, okay? So draw the same thing, but until phase is equal to 180 degrees, so this is enough for us, okay? Of course, we will have the conjugate one, which look like this, okay? And we will have the same structure, so our mapping will look like this, okay? This is good, it will start from one, this will be the unit circle, okay, this is good, and the only thing that we need to find is uh, maybe the location of this point and location of this point numerically, which is easy because we already covered the all details. Okay, so let's look at the final result. Again, it is expected. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it looks a little bit different, of course, because of the constant. This is e to the power minus pi over 2. We can also compute this, and this is the final result. Okay, so let's do uh, something else. Okay, uh, and try to manipulate this and to get an idea how we can get different forms. Okay, so instead of j omega s divided by 2, I can have a cap on j omega s divided by 4. Okay, so let's remove this. So what are we going to do is the shape, the logarithmic shape is same almost, but now we have a limit on the angle. Okay, and instead of this is, as you can see, uh, have a corresponding angle of pi. So it is half is technically pi over two. What are we going to obtain is this. We will remove that. And this will part will be our mapping. Okay. So if I change this to, for example, to j omega s divided by, for example, eight, it will be something like that. Okay. Okay. So this looks like a kind of uh, piece of 